How do we know the Bible is true? First thing is the fact that Jesus is God. And he said the word is truth. So if Jesus is God and he said the word is truth, what do we know about the word of God? It's true. If Jesus isn't God, does it really matter what he said about the Bible? No, doesn't matter at all. So the first line of assurance as far as how do we know that the Bible is true is the question about Jesus. Who is Jesus? If he is God, then we can know with confidence that this word is true because that's what he said about it. The word of God is truth. The second thing is that the Bible was inspired by God. He is the ultimate author, yet he moved in the hearts of common men to pen his words. So the Bible was inspired by God. These 40 authors over a 1,600-year period, they encountered the living God. And in this relationship with the living God, they were moved to write God's words down for people to read. So the Bible was inspired by God in 2 Timothy 3, 16 through 17. It says this, all scripture is God breathed. This is the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, that all scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching, for rebuking. We love that about the word of God, don't we? Just love to be rebuked correcting and training in righteousness so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. So the Word of God is God-breathed. All Scripture is inspired by God, made known to the prophets and the apostles uh, through the Holy Spirit, They used God and the Holy Spirit, used the personalities of men to pen these books. And as you read them, you can tell there's different styles in each each particular book or letter. Isaiah was a classic writer. You would look and say, wow, he was trained in literary style and could really weave a a, a sentence together where you just go, wow. And then there was Amos, you know, a herdsman. You know, could probably barely read himself, but yet God used him. And then you go in the New Testament and you see Luke and he's very detailed and and he gets to the specifics and he really lays out a, a powerful journey of Christ's life and what took place through the Acts of the Apostles. And then you see Mark, and, and he's not quite there, not quite as detailed, and not quite as good in his writing style. But yet, all of them were inspired to do what they did through God, by God, through God's Spirit. So all Scripture, we can say, is god breathe, and it's useful, it's beneficial to us. It teaches us, it rebukes us, it corrects us, it trains us in righteousness so that we are prepared, equipped for every good work. What's the good work? What has God called us to? Faith in Jesus Christ. What? When the disciples asked the question, what's the work of the ministry? Jesus responded and said, the work is to believe in me. What does the Word of God do? It equips us to walk by faith in Jesus Christ, regardless of the circumstances we face day in and day out. That's what the Word of God equips us to do, and that's why it's inspired by God. In 2 Peter chapter 1, Peter writes this, Above all, you must understand that no prophecy of Scripture came about by the prophet's own interpretation. 
For prophecy never had its origin in the will of man. But men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. So here was Peter. He was Jew, was a Jew, and he grew up going to synagogue and the temple and, and hearing the reading of the Word of God, the Old Testament, the Old Testament. And then he's in his fishing boats and, and doing his thing and casting out nets and, and trying to bring in uh, a big you know, net full of fish so that he can sell and distribute and, and make his living. And then Jesus walks along the shore and he says, come and follow me. And guess what? Peter left his fishing boats, and he went and followed Jesus. And in Peter's mind, something clicked, that this is the man that these Old Testament scriptures have been talking about. It said there was a guy that was going to be born in Bethlehem. He was going to be raised in Nazareth. He was all these different prophecies about Jesus. He was going to be born of a virgin. He was going to escape and, and live in, in Egypt for a period of time. All of these things, and, and he had read about them. And so when he met Jesus face to face, something clicked. This is this guy the prophets are talking about. This is this Messiah. This is the one that we've been looking for. And so when Jesus asked the question that we talked about last week, who do you say that I am? Peter was the first to stand up and say, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Why? Because it all clicked. The word of the prophets was made more sure in Peter's mind and in his experience. And he saw Jesus face to face and he knew this was the guy that the word of God was talking about. Then Peter had that wonderful experience of going up with James and John on this mountainside. No one knows exactly where that is or which little mountain peak it is, uh, but it was there in Israel. And right before his eyes, he sees Jesus transfigured. And there along with Jesus is Elijah and Moses. I wonder how he knew. I mean, it's like, did they have pictures? And they're like, oh yeah, there's... There's Moses. Um, but he knew. And there was Jesus in his transfigured state. And then a voice from heaven said, This is my son in who I am well pleased. Listen to him. And it was made even clearer to Peter that this Bible is about Jesus. God inspired men to write a story about the Savior, about a person who took on our flesh and blood, became one of us, so that we could have forgiveness of sins and life everlasting. The story of man's redemption that was carried out in a person. Not a list of rules and regulations, not rituals and not all these things that we're supposed to do, but in a person. And so, who in the right mind would simply focus on a person? Not man. That's not what we would write. And so, when Peter saw that and he heard the voice and said, this is my son and who I'm well pleased, the prophets were made more sure to him. And he said, they're writing about Jesus. And only men moved by God's Spirit would write that story about Jesus. In John 14, Jesus said to his disciples, But the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. So, we have the Old Testament prophets and, and Moses and, and the wisdom writers and, and, 
and all of their stuff, they're talking about this man named Jesus. They don't have a lot of the details, but it's an unfolding story. And then Jesus comes on the scene and he's going to want people to tell that story about his life, what, it, what his three years in public ministry was going to be about, what his death, burial, and resurrection was all going to be about. And then he wanted people to explain that, to give a full explanation of what this gospel message is all about. And he didn't want to leave it just to the memory of those who walked with him and those who talked with him. So Jesus said, I'm sending a counselor. And I, he's the Holy Spirit. The Father's going to send him to you in my name. And guess what? This Holy Spirit is going to teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Can you imagine sitting there with Jesus, you know, at that last supper? And, you know, you look at the Gospel of John, basically starting in John 13 all the way up to John 17. That's kind of what Jesus unloaded on them that night. You know you're going to die. You know your end is at hand and the plan of God is going to be put into effect. And you want to leave your most loyal followers and friends with news of what's going to happen. And so Jesus, that last supper, kind of unloaded and said, here's what I want you to know. And can you imagine after his resurrection, those disciples, well, do you remember what he said here? And, and how about this? And no, no, he said that. And man, it could have been a mess. But what did God do? He sent his spirit. And his spirit taught them all things. And he reminded those apostles what Jesus had said to them. So it wasn't left up to their memory. God's spirit brought it to their mind where they could write the story down so that we could know what happened and how it happened. John 16, but when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears. And he will tell you what is yet to come. He will bring glory to me by taking from what is mine and making it known to you. So again, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth is going to come and he's going to guide them, the disciples, into all truth. He guides us into all truth as well. How does he do that? He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come, and he will bring glory to me. What's the job of the Holy Spirit? To bring glory to who? To Jesus. If you ever get involved with a group and they keep bringing glory to the Holy Spirit, or to anything else, is that of God? No. Why? Because God's Spirit says it's my job to bring glory to Jesus. I'm pointing people to Him, not me. I get the joy, <laughs> the privilege to be able to point people to the one this story is all about. And to his death, his burial, and his resurrection. So that people can respond. And can know the Father. You have cults that are out there. And they'll come to your door. And they'll knock. And they'll try to talk to you. And you can say, what's the purpose of the Holy Spirit? Why did the Holy Spirit come? And they're going to give you all kinds of answers. And you can go right to this verse and you can say, do you know what the Holy Spirit has come to do according to this verse? And it's to bring glory to Jesus. You haven't mentioned Jesus once. So I know automatically that you are not being led of God and that what you're trying to tell me is not of God. Why? Because the Word of God is about Jesus. Period. And if the Holy Spirit is doing anything in your life, 
It is going to be pointing you to Him and to a walk of faith in Him. Jesus, God the Father, sent the Spirit to the disciples to guide them all into all truth and to bring glory to Jesus. That's what this word is all about. You have to ask the question. You think, you know, it's written over 1,600 years by 40 different people. And, you know, why did God go to all that trouble? Because throughout history, from day one, God has had a testimony about His Son. 